good morning welcome to day number 228 august 16th and i was out here listening to a seminar on public speaking and it was really good but guys i mean this environment definitely made me stop <laughs> the seminary which I can go back to it of course but I had to stop to read because it's so peaceful out here I mean there are butterflies having breakfast all over our flowers which you know I'm gonna show you because I don't think I've ever showed you my backyard and since we've done tours in Europe why don't we do a tour here in my backyard which I absolutely love and by the way the credit is to my husband because he's the one that keeps this place so gorgeous look at this look at this guys this is a blueberry tree which provides delicious blueberries we have here on the left lavender and this huge one rosemary which did not like a pot so we put them on the ground and they're thriving this is where all the birdies eat they were here not too long ago I'm pretty sure you heard them I have two pineapples here check out that line we finally got a line look at these flowers This is jasmine, which smells amazing. She's holding on to everything with dear life. <laughs> Look at that. This is it, guys. This is where I read. This is my oasis. We absolutely love our backyard. And this is why I come over here all the time to read because you know can you blame me so that's part of my world look at that sun today is such a beautiful day so like I said I had to stop to read I felt it in my spirit I, I'm, I'm telling you, that seminar was so interesting, but reading is my passion, so, and not reading, just reading the Bible, by the way. I'm not too crazy about reading, by the way. I usually listen to audiobooks because, I don't know, it's, it was never... hard I guess to me to read I mean I'm coming from the project so that was the least important thing <laughs> in the projects but like I said it's, it's not my thing but I have to say reading the Bible it's my number one thing 
and I don't think it's gonna ha it's gonna end December 31st I have to tell you I'm gonna redo it again and again and again year after year after year because I've been listening to it for mm, eight years and this is my first year reading it and I don't think I can stop I mean I am so addicted to listening or reading the Bible on a daily basis I don't think I can stop I think it's gonna be my life for the rest of my life so let's go ahead and read Nehemiah 11 1 through 12 26 and hopefully the butterflies and the birdies come back the leaders of the people were living in Jerusalem the holy city a tenth of the people from the other towns of Judah and Benjamin were chosen by sacred lots to live there too. But the rest stayed where they were, and the people commanded everyone who volunteered to resettle in Jerusalem. Here is a list of the names of the provincial officials who came to live in Jerusalem. Most of the people, priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants continued to live in their own homes in the various towns of Judah. But some of the, peop some of the people from Judah and Benjamin resettled in Jerusalem. For the tribe of Judah, Hathiah, son of Uzziah, son of Zechariah, son of Amariah, son of Shephatiah, no, Shephatiah, son of Mahalalel of the family of Perez. Also, Mosiah, son of Baruch, son of Kol Jose, son of Haziah, son of Adiah, son of Joarib, son of Zechariah of the family of Shelah. There were 468 descendants of Perez who lived in Jerusalem, all outstanding men. From the tribe of Benjamin. Salu, son of Meshulam, son of Joed, son of Pediah, son of Koliah, son of Messiah, son of Ethiel, son of Josiah, no, Jeshiah. After him were Gabai and Salai, and a total of 928 relatives. Their chief officer was Joel, son of Zikri, who was assisted by Judah, son of Hazenua, second in command over the city. From the priest, Jediah, son of Jorib, Jakim, and Seriah, son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Merayoth, son of Ahitub, the supervisor of the temple of God, also 822 of their associates who worked at the temple. Also, Adiah, son of Jeroham, son of Pelaliah, son of Amzi, son of Zechariah, son of Pashur, son of Malchijah, along with 242 of his associates, who were heads of their families. Also, Amasiah, no, Amashsiah, son of Azarel, son of Aziah, or Azai, son of Meshilamoth, son of Immer, and 128 of his outstanding associates. Their chief officer was Sabdiel, son of Ahedolim. From the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashub, son of Azrakam, son of Hashabiah, son of Buni. Also, Shabbatai and Josabad, who were in charge of the work outside the temple of God. Also, Mataniah, son of Mika, son of Zabdi, a descendant of Asaph, who led in thanksgiving and prayer. Also, Bakbukiah, who was Mataniah's assistant, and Abda, son of Shamua, son of Galal, 
son of Jeruthon. In all, there were 284 Levites in the holy city. From the, gate, from the gatekeepers, Akub, Talman, and 172 of their associates who guarded their gates, or the gate, rather. The other priests, Levites, and the rest of the Israelites lived wherever their family inheritance was located in any of the towns of Judah. The temple servants, however, whose leaders were Zia or Ziha and Gishba, all lived on the hill of Ophel. The chief officer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzi, son of Bani, son of Hashabiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micah, a descendant of Asaph, whose family served as singers at God's temple. Their daily responsibilities were carried out according to the terms of a royal command. Petahiah, son of Meshezabel, a descendant of Zerah, son of Judah, was the royal advisor in all matters of public administration. As for the surrounding villages with their open fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Arba with its settlements, Dibon with, with its settlements, and Jacobzil with its villages. They also lived in Jeshua, Molda, Beth Pelet, Hazar Shual, Beersheba with its settlements, Ziklag, and Mekona with its settlements. They also lived in Enrimon, Zora, Jarmuth, Zanoa, and Adulam with their surrounding villages. They also lived in Lachish with its nearby fields and Azika with its surrounding villages. So the people of Judah were living all the way from Beersheba in the south to the valley of Hinnom. Some of the people of Benjamin lived at Geba, Mikmash, Asia, and Bethel with its settlements. They also lived in Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, Azor, Rama, Gitaim, Hadid, Zeboim, Nebalad, Lod, Ono, and the Valley of Craftmen. Some of the Levites who lived in Judah were sent to live with the tribe of Benjamin. Here is the list of the priests and Levites who returned with Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Yeshua the high priest. Seraiah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Maluk, Hattush, Shekaniah, Harim, Merimoth, Ido, Ginnathon, Abijah, Miniamim, Moadiah, Bilga, Shemaiah, Joarib, Jediah, Salu, Amak, Hilkiah, and Jediah. These were the leaders of the priests and their associates in the days of Yeshua. The Levites who returned with them were Yeshua, Binui, Kadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, who with his associates was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. Their associates, Bakbukiah and Uni, stood opposite opposite them during the service. Yeshua the high priest was the father of Joachim. Joachim was the father of Elisha. Elisha was the father of Joaida. Joaida was the father of Johanan. Johanan. Johanan was the father of Jadua. Now when Joachim was high priest, the family leaders of the priests were as follows. Meriah was the leader of the family of Seraiah. Hananiah was the leader of the family of Jeremiah. Meshulam was the leader of the family of Ezra. 
Jehohanan was the, was the leader of the family of Amariah. Jonathan was the leader of the family of Maluk. Joseph was the leader of the family of Shechaniah. Adna was the leader of the family of Harim. Halkai was the leader of the family of Merimoth. Zechariah was leader of the family of Edo. Meshulam was the leader of the family of Ginnathon. Zikri was the leader of the family of Abijah. There was also a leader of the family of Miniamim. Piltai was leader of the family of Moadiah. Shemua was leader of the family of Bilga. Jehonathan was leader of the family of Shemaiah. Matanai was leader of the family of Jorib. Uzi was leader of the family of Jediah. Kalai was leader of the family of Salu. Eber was leader of the family of Amak. Hashabiah was leader of the family of Hilkiah. Nathaniel was leader of the family of Jediah. A record of the Levite families was kept during the years when Elishib, Joida, Johanan, and Jadua served a, as high priest. Another record of the priest was kept during the reign of Darius the Persian. A record of the heads of the Levite families was kept in the book of history down to the days of Johanan, the grandson of Elishib. These were the family leaders of the Levites. Hashabiah, Sherebiah, Jeshua, Binui, Cadmiel, and other associates who stood opposite them during the ceremonies of praise and thanksgiving, one section responding to the other as commanded by David, the man of God. This included Mataniah, Bakbukiah, and Obadiah. Meshulam, Talman, and Akub were the gatekeepers in charge of the storerooms at the gates. These all served in the days of Joachim, son of Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and of Ezra, the priest and scribe. First Corinthians ten fourteen through thirty three. So, my dear friends, flee from the worship idols. You are reasonable people. Decide for yourselves if what I no decide for yourself if what I am saying is true. When we bless the cup at the Lord's table, aren't we sharing in the blood of Christ? And when we break the bread, aren't we sharing in the body of Christ? And though we are many, we all eat from one loaf of bread, showing we are, on, we are one body. Think about the people of Israel. Weren't they united by eating the sacrifices at the altar? What am I trying to say? Am I saying the food offered to idols has some significance? Or that idols are real gods? No, not at all. I am saying that these sacrifices are offered to demons, not to God. And I don't want you to participate with demons. You cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and from the cup of demons too. You cannot eat at the Lord's table and at the table of demons too. What? Do we dare to rouse the Lord's jealousy? Do you think we are stronger, stronger than He is? You say, I am allowed to do anything. But not everything is good for you. You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. Don't be concerned for your own good, but for the good of others. So you may eat any meat that is sold in the marketplace without raising questions of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. If someone who isn't a believer asks you home for, for dinner, Accept the invitation if you want to. Eat whatever is offered to you without raising questions of conscience. But suppose someone tells you, this meat was offered to an idol. Don't eat it. Out of consideration for the conscience of the one who told you. It might not be a matter of conscience for you, but it is for the other person. For why should my freedom be limited by, by what someone else thinks? 
If I can thank God for the food and enjoy it, why should I be condemned for eating it? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Don't give offense to Jews or Gentiles or the, or the church of God. I too try to please everyone in everything I do. I don't just do what is best for me. I do what is best for others so that many be saved. Psalm 34, 11 through 22. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turned his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. Calamity will surely destroy the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Proverbs 21, 14 and 16. A secret gift calms anger. A bribe under the table pacifies fury. Justice is a joy to the godly, but it terrifies evildoers. The person who strays from common sense will end up in the company of the dead. Wow. That was a packed proverb. <laughs> wow. I had to contain myself when I finished reading this psalm. Wow. Wasn't it powerful? Please meditate on that. What a powerful psalm. And something that I wanted to read again. 1 Corinthians 10, 14 through 33. Wow. That was, that was some good word. I mean, it makes so much sense. Let's go back to it. This was so good. Let's start. Okay, let's start on 23. You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. <laughs> that is so powerful. Wow. Let's continue because that's, that's not it. Don't be concerned of your own good, but the good of others. So you may eat any meat that is sold in the marketplace without raising questions of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. If someone who isn't a believer asks you home for dinner, accept the invitation if you want to. Eat whatever is offered to you without raising questions of conscience. But suppose someone tells you, this meat was offered to an idol. Don't eat it out of consideration for the conscience of the one who told you. It might not be a matter of conscience for you, but it is for the other person. For why should my freedom be limited by what someone else thinks? If I can thank God for the food and enjoy it, why should I 
be condemned for eating it. Guys, 31 and 32 and 33, please meditate on this. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Don't give offense to Jews or Gentiles or the church of God. I too try to please everyone in everything I do. I don't just do what is best for me. I do what is best for others so that many be saved. Amen. We seriously need to think about other people. As Christians, that's our responsibility. And let's go back on Psalm. I mean, I loved the entire thing. But, you know what? Let's read it again. I can't help it. I mean, I'm done. If you guys need to go, that's fine. But I want to continue by reading this again. Again, Psalm 34, 11 through 22. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. Calamity will surely destroy the wicked. And those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Wow. Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your encouragement. I mean, this is all we need. This is our guide. Your word is our guide. I never understood that. Until I started listening and reading the Bible. Never ever understood that. You know, people say that all the time. Pastors, on their messages, everybody. But until you actually read it yourself, you will never understand the extent of instructions to survive this life that is in the scriptures. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much because everything is so re relevant for us. In 2022, still so relevant. And it's still going to be re relevant for the rest of our lives. So thank you. Thank you, Lord, for, for the instructions. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. We pray for those that are brokenhearted, for those that are, their spirits are crushed. We pray for them. 
Jesus. We've been there and we'll be there again. I mean, as part of life. But today we, we pray for those and pray that these words, this psalm will bring them encouragement and you lift them up right this moment give them the peace that only you can provide only you Lord and we thank you we thank you because we're part of this amazing community that place our hope in you and you only. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. As I hope you feel through that video, the peace that is just sitting here. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray that you feel this peace the same way that I feel it here. Just close your eyes if you can, if you're not driving, of course. Just close your eyes and receive that peace. Receive it. Receive encouragement. Receive anointing. The best is yet to come. That's what came to my mind. I don't know what you're going through, but the, the best is yet to come. Receive it at this moment. Something is shifting right now. I don't know what it is, but the Lord knows. Something is shifting right this moment. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Wow. We are not worthy. But yet, you decide to give us these moments. Shifting. That's the word. Shifting. Inhale it and exhale. Declare it, shifting. Declare it in whatever, whatever in your life needs shifting. Declare it right now, shifting. Thank you, Lord, for the shift. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Wow, how I love you, Lord. How I love you, Holy Spirit, for giving us these moments. I had to stop listening to that conference because of this. God wanted a moment for us and with us. But we're benefiting from it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just thank you. Thank you for the shift. The best is yet to come. Don't give up. It's right there. And it's happening right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oof. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Guys, I will see you tomorrow after this amazing day.
what a moment i hope you feel it too so i will see you tomorrow and i'm gonna post the video of the butterflies happy breakfast because it was the cutest thing in the world so god bless you can't wait to hear the shifting <laughs>